Hello students, for our next lecture in leadership and management, we will proceed to the first phase or the first stage of the managerial process, which is termed as the planning stage. During this stage, this involves, or in this stage, it involves deciding in advance what to do, who, sh who should do it, and how, when, where it is to be done. During this phase, we plan our activities for the organization or for the group. We plan our objectives. We plan our budget. And we plan our the resources that we will, that we will need for our activities. If that involves a lot of planning, we consider the planning phase or the planning stage as the most critical part of the managerial function because it involves choosing among all the possible alternatives that will uh, that will be the be uh, that will enable us to choose which course of actions will be the best or will be the best now planning is a proactive and deliberate process proactive means you anticipate in advance no what are the things that you need to do in the future? Now, planning takes on several types, no? but we will focus on three major types of planning, which includes proactive, strategic, and organizational planning. When we talk of proactive planning, this is one of the, this, uh, the term itself would tell you that this is a deliberate process wherein you anticipate what will happen in the future. But to help us understand what is proactive planning, there are four modes no, of planning where proactive planning is included. When we do reactive planning, this is the, if you imagine it in a, in a continuum, this one is located at the left side of the continuum. Now, reactive planning is a, pla is a type of planning wherein you do it in response to a problem that you detect. So you do not look into the future, but rather you look into a problem, concentrate on it, and develop plans out of it. Now, this may be good to address immediate problem, but it is not good to do reactive planning because you do not consider the growth of the organization. Kumbaga, nagpaplano ka lamang para sa sandaling may problema. The next, the next planning mode is what you call your inactive planning. When we say inactive planning, you do planning to maintain the status quo or the comfortable state of your organization. Well, again, this is good no? temporarily to maintain just what you are in and would not plan for what you want in the future. So that's the negative side of it. Because if you do not plan for the future of your organization or of your group, then your tendency is your organization will become stagnant. When we talk of preactive planning, this is a planning process that is futuristic. However, this is the primordial form of proactive planning because what you do for in this type of planning is that you do not value experience you do not take into consideration past performance. Hence, when you plan in the future, you do not consider what you have done before. You do not consider what you have done before and what things need to be improved. So, ang preactive planning is, is a progenitor ba of proactive planning because medyo futuristic ang dating pero you do not consider your past experience. When we talk of proactive planning, this is a type of planning which consider your past experience, your present logistics, and your future directions. So in proactive planning, you consider the past, the present, and the future. The second type or the, uh, another, another type of planning is what you call your forecasting. No? Under proactive planning, you forecast something. This is an estimation on how will a condition be in the future now in forecasting you try to input no insights from different people no 
you try to sequence your activities when you forecast your plan and you want to protect your plan no, from undesirable changes. So here are examples or tools that you use for proactive planning. It can be in a form of risk assessment table, failure mode, effect analysis, and program planning. In risk assessment tool, this is an example of risk assessment tool. This is a, this is a planning tool where you try to identify the different hazards, the, the group of people who will be affected by that hazard, the things that you are currently doing to address that hazard, and the future actions that you need to do to address the hazard, to further address the hazard. And you also place in your risk assessment table, no, what are the actions, no, or what rather, what are the measurements that you have achieved, no, that you have achieved your, your plan of action to address the hazard. So that is a risk assessment table. Another type of planning tool or another planning tool that you can use is to utilize your failure mode effects analysis or the FMEA, wherein you try to put, no, you try to imagine a certain failure state and try to analyze the fail, the cause of that failure or of that failed state. And from that analysis, you will develop no, process controls to address failure modes. By that way, you have planned no, in advance what you want, or what uh, uh, you plan in advance the ways no, no, to prevent such failure. Okay, that's your failure mode and effect analysis. Now, the second type of planning is your strategic planning. Now, strategic planning is a type of is a planning process wherein you focus on the purpose, the mission, the philosophy, the goals related to the external organizational environment. It's like aligning your organizational capabilities to external opportunities to help your organization move forward. Usually, strategic plans are done to cover three, about three to 10 years no, of organization. Some organization, usually small ones, plan strategically every three years. Some large organizations usually plan for 10 years time. So it depends upon the organization on how long their strategic plan would cover. Okay. Now, there are several tools for strategic planning. The first that I'll discuss is what you call your SWOT analysis. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. No? The first step is to identify your objective before doing your SWOT because through this objective, dito magmumula no? yung inyong gagawing SWOT analysis so that your SWOT analysis will be uh, directed, no? may direction. Now, when we define strength, it means these are all the internal attributes that will help you or your organization achieve your objectives. No? Internal. So, ibig sabihin, pang loob na attribute na gagamitin ninyo to achieve your goal. When we say weaknesses, these are your internal attributes that may challenge you to achieve your goal. Okay? Opportunities, on the other hand, refer to external conditions that promote achievement of goal. Meaning, sa labas ng organization, may mga bagay na uh, pwede ninyong magamit, which is outside of your organization, that may help you achieve your goals. And threats, on the other hand, no, are those external conditions that challenge your achievement of goals. So it's like those threats, no, 
whether outside, okay, or your uh, uh, pag outside yan or something not in your organization, kapag yan ay magcha-challenge sa inyong organization to achieve your goal, you refer to it as your threat. Okay? So, here's a table to summarize what are those, no? What are those? Okay? The next type of planning tool or strategic planning tool rather is what you call your balance scorecard. In a balance scorecard, it is a type of planning tool where you try to focus your your planning process no, on four facets of your organizational value, which means, namely, which uh, namely as your financial aspect, your customer aspect, your business process, and learning and growth. Pag sinabing financial, yung kaperahan ng organization, yung budget, yung resources, and the likes. When we say customer aspect, et, hindi lang basta-basta customer na bumibili sa inyo, no? Yung mga customer are those people who engage no, with your process. So, for example, in the school, teachers no, are customers because we engage in the process of the school. Students are primarily customers because you are engaging into the process of the school. So, everyone in the organization is a customer no, because we engage in the dealings in the processes of the organization. When we talk of the business process, this is the internal no, workings of the organization. Internal working, so lahat yan. Pag sa school, simula enrollment, payment ng, uh, payment ng tuition fee. Maski yung ginagawa ng teacher at ng student, nagpapa-exam, no? uma-attend ng klase. Those are business processes. Those are the internal workings of the school, thus referring to its business process. Learning and growth, on the other hand, refers to the capability no, of the people inside the organization. Not just the individual capability, but also the collective ones. Yung pinagsama-samang learning and uh, capability ng mga tao. Okay? Now, your balance scorecard when done, usually looks like this. No? Nakasentro sa apat na aspeto ng, ng balance scorecard yung vision and mission ng, ng isang organization. Tapos based on this vision and mission, doon mo ngayon susuriin no? or ipaplano yung mga strategies mo to achieve your goal. Okay? So dapat, no, these arrows, okay, signify this arrow signify alignment no so ibig sabihin dapat sa balance scorecard whatever you you plan financially okay should be aligned no doon sa plano mo sa customers sa learning and growth sa internal business no or the business process etc okay so it's like looking at the organization as an ecosystem no as an ecosystem with interrelated parts. So you plan for each interrelated part. Okay? Now, traditionally, long-range planning or strategic planning is done by senior management or top management. Usually, ginagawa yan ng president or stakeholders. But growing literature says, no, there's a growing body of literature of researches stating that there is an increase seeing recognition that we need no that we need everyone in the organization to be involved in the strategic planning process bakit daw because not all things na naiisip ng presidente ay nasasakop doon sa nai-experience ng mga tao na nasa baba ng organization no kung ang presidente ang point of view niya is more on the macro level the micro level part of every uh, uh, micro level point of view of each employee no should be also included kasi hindi nakikita ng presidente yon no so that's why we need to involve them and sabi ko nga doon sa, sa sa theory of participative management 
including people in the strategic planning process, what? Significantly improves their commitment, their involvement, kasi they feel a sense of belongingness. And also, they are more of, uh, they feel that they are uh, owners no, of the decision. Kasi kasama sila sa pagpaplano. So if they are more uh, involved in the planning process, they feel more ownership of the decision, they are more likely to follow and implement your decision. Okay? So it fosters cooperative spirit plus a workable solution for everyone. Now, why do we need to plan for healthcare organizations? Because our healthcare organization is always a, a dynamic system, meaning palaging nagbabago ang dynamics, no? ang pakikitungo, ang relationship, ng bawat tao sa loob ng isang organization, lalong-lalo na sa healthcare organization. We have to plan because, number one, we are moving, we are shifting our paradigm, no? we are shifting our paradigm in healthcare from illness care to wellness care because we want to reduce the cost. Sabi nga natin, prevention is better than cure dahil mas, hindi masyadong magastos kapag na-prevent mo ang sakit. No? That has a big implication sa direksyon ng ospital. No? Kaya kung mapapansin niyo some hospitals would have uh, would have departments no for wellness, no? Would have departments for health teaching because they need to they need to plan themselves. They need to position themselves from this changing paradigm in healthcare. Minsan, pumapasok na rin yung use of complementary and alternative medicine. Diba? We have to plan here as an organization because this complementary and alternative medicine may have, may have different implications on our patients. No? And, we, and if patients have shifted their paradigm no, from hospital-based care to tradition, from Western medicine to complementary and alternative medicine, we have to plan our strategy. Okay. Tama ba? So when we we also plan because we want to co to manage our costs. No? Well, that's given. And that patients become consumers of cost and quality information. Dati, ang pasyente ay consumers of quality healthcare lang. No? Well, nag-evolve na yon. Hindi lang quality healthcare lamang, kundi, all, kundi kasama na rin yung quality information. Kasi nararamdaman nila na nagbabayad sila ng mas malaki, then they need to be more meticulous with the information that they get. No? So that way, we also have to plan kung kailangan ng tao na quality information, therefore, our, our nursing workforce, our hospital workforce, should be also dekalibre. No? And that there is a shift from continuity of provider to continuity of information. It means that healthcare is now anchored no, to proper transmission of correct information. Now, let's proceed to decision making, problem solving, and critical thinking. When we say decision making, this is a complex cognitive process defined as choosing a particular course of action. Now, in leadership and management, decision-making is one of the criteria wherein management expertise is judged. You will be judged by your, by your subordinates, by how you make decisions. If you make a bad decision, you're considered as a bad leader. Because you, as a leader, you have the role no, to direct, to steer your organization. Okay? And by, by making decision, you have given them direction. If you gave them a bad direction, you gave them, you, were, you, you are a bad leader. Okay? So, laging tatandaan kapag kayo ay naging leaders, head nurses, or uh, chief nurses in the future, or nursing leaders in the future, you need to be careful, you need to be decisive, No? 
you need to be careful in making decisions. Because it is our choices, sabi nga ni J.K. Rowling, it is our choices that show that we truly show what we truly are far more than our abilities. Okay? Now, another part of decision making is problem solving. So, problem solving is an ability to be to identify and intervene on the root cause of the problem. No? It may not be used to decide on a problem due to lack of resources or significance. Third skill that you need to, to develop as a leader is also your critical thinking skill. No? Your critical thinking skill is a broader skill than decision making and problem solving. So it's like critical thing, uh, it's it's a manner of thinking no? that moves you, your thinking from general to specific, narrowing down your focus until the logic of the question and the problem comes into same conclusion. So it requires you, for you to have a critical mind, it requires you to have an attitude to seek information. No? To seek information, valid information, and uh, and process this information, and having an intellectual commitment to use these skills to guide your behavior. So it's like a mindset. No? Critical thinking is a mindset, no? an important mindset for leaders. Because having a critical mind no, will help you deduce the correct decision. No? Having a critical mind will help you uh, will help you in problem solving, will help you identify the best no, course of action that you can give to your subordinates. All right? Here are some of the traditional problem solving process that you may encounter. You can see them uh, here and I will give it to you on your uh, lec uh, in your lecture notes. No, you may download it in our lecture notes. Okay. So if you will notice all of these uh, decision making models, decision making uh, process are 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 included no contains contains the similar steps okay contains the similar steps if you will notice these models these models contain no contain the same elements okay now there are some variations in decision making because uh, st uh if you will notice some people would decide differently from one to the other now, there are some, there, there, some people would say that gender or sex, okay, will have a different or have an influence on the way we decide. They say that men were more, are more aggressive than women when making decision. While women are more, uh, while women are more concerned with, we are more concerned with nurturing, nurturing decisions. All right. Values also play a part in your decision-making process. Your beliefs affect how you decide or choose you know, the alternatives that you want for your members. Even organizational values also affect the way, the way you decide for your subordinates. Even your life experience also would like uh, also would tell you or would also influence the way you decide for things okay so here are some decision making tools that i want to share with you one of the decision tool decision making tool that i am going to present is your decision grid in a decision grid you de you try to enumerate all the alternative solutions for a certain problem determine the financial aspects of it or financial effect of it you turn uh, you try to analyze the political effect no political effect of that decision meaning how can it be implemented implemented organization wide okay departmental effect refers to the effect to the particular uh, uh, department that will implement your decision and the time no reflects or uh, depicts no the, the necessary time for the 
the necessary time that is needed for the implementation of such uh, this implementation of such decisions. Okay. The next is a tree diagram, okay, or a graphic representation of the solutions marked for implementation. Now, a partition, it partitions a big idea, okay, or a problem into smaller components for you to make it easier to understand. No? Now, this tree diagram makes it makes a potentially overwhelming project or problem manageable by showing the real level of complexity of actions for the decision. So this is an example of a tree diagram. No? Imagine that this is a big problem which is uh, partitioned into smaller problems which is further uh, further uh, further uh, partitioned into smaller problems okay and until you arrive no at the most uh, at the simplest no at the simplest manageable uh, unit no that you can solve and lastly is your root cause analysis which is a reiterative process or approach to analyze the factors that resulted to a certain problem Always remember that a certain problem in an organization cannot be cannot be attributed only to one root cause. All right? You cannot attribute that to only one root cause. Now, imagine a plant with several roots. A problem can have many several roots. And to analyze a problem and to arrive to different many root causes you have to repeat and repeat your root cause analysis. Usually, the, the, the Japanese use the five wise approach, no? the five wise approach, wherein they try to analyze a root cause a problem and ask why it happened. They will ask, no? they will continuously ask each why with another why until they arrive to a solution that's not controllable or that's that is controllable pala, rather that is controllable by the agent of the organization now let us go to another type of planning which is organizational planning in this type of planning your organization undergoes a process of defining your strategy your direction and making decision on allocating its your resources to pursue your strategy. Now it's like actually understanding the current position of your goal or of your organization and exploring possible avenues through which you can pursue a particular course of action. In this process, no, you try to develop your mission, you try to plan out what is your mission, your vision, your philosophy, goals, objectives, policies, procedures, and rules. Now, Vision statement would be the first priority to develop in, a, in, an, in organizational planning. This involves describing your future goal and your future aim or future direction of an organization. It's like a picture that you want to project for your organization. While strategic planning is the blueprint, no, your vision is an artistic interpretation of your plan. Now, your vision needs to be an artistic interpretation because it provides no it provides a mental picture for your members for the for the organization's vision simply put the vision is the description in words no of your organizational picture okay now your vision is also long term and concentrates on the future it should be developed no, to be a source of inspiration. Tandaan po na ang vision should be short. Should, should be short and covers the essentials. Okay? Here is an example of the vision of our hospital. Okay? And this will be another example of the vision of another hospital. The next step no, in planning for the uh, organization, 
will be your mission statement. Now, you need to develop your mission statement because it identifies the reason of your existence. Why your organization exists. It answers that question. It should be around three to four sentences to explain the purpose of the organization. Now, this occupies the highest position because it influences the development of your philosophies, your goals, your objectives, your policies, your procedures, and rules. It is formulated through exhaustive dialogue. Ibig sabihin, all members of the organization should be part no, in making in making this uh, mission statement because we want to foster commitment to this mission. If we develop our mission one-sidedly, chances are members of the organization will become alienated to it. They feel foreign to the mission statement. Now, here's an example of our hospital's um, mission statement. You may read this in your notes, but notice that it displays or depicts, okay, the purpose of the whole organization. And here's an example of a mission statement from another hospital. Now, flowing from your mission statement and your vision statement are your philosophy and values. Now, philosophies and values no, are your guiding principles no, for, for, for all members of the organization. They can usually be found in employee manuals, no, which, which is important because it needs to be communicated to all. Okay? Now, always understand that, uh, that philosophy values or values may differ from different levels of, of or, uh, departments or organizations within the hospital. No? But we have to make sure that each set of values, each set of philosophies would be aligned to one another. Okay? Now, our values may differ from... Uh, from one individual to the other it's because we are uh, we are living no in different societies we are living different lives no our values are influenced by the way we live and the people around us okay some cultures would say that having individualistic values are better than collective values and vice versa no so those values affect how we decide, how we move, how we uh, how we act, no, in our everyday lives and even organizations. All right. Now uh, we can we can uh, we can depict no the values whether they are true or just an indicator. If a person is exhibiting true value, a person is living his values. Isina sa buhay niya. But if that person only espouses that value but did but do not uh, follow the values he or she is believing, that person is exhibiting only a value indicator. Now, in your activity, no, in your activity for this uh, for this module you will be asked no, to develop or identify your values. So here are some steps. No? Try to reflect on it. What are those values? And try to ask yourself, do you prize or cherish it? Is it consciously repeated? And is it positively affirmed and enacted? Okay? Now, personal values, the values that we have, may differ from the values of the organization. No, because sabi ko nga kanina, we are living different lives and our experiences form no, what values do we have. Now, sometimes or more often, individual values clash with organizational values. No? Minsan magkaiba yung pinaniniwalaan natin 
sa pinaniniwalaan or sa gustong mangyari ng organization. Now, those who frequently clash their their values, no? against their personal beliefs, do, against doon sa ospital, they, these people or these employees experience confusion, no? anxiety, and even sometimes outrage. So what is this implication? What is the implication of this? When you become managers, no? always try to emphasize to your employees no? to retain them no? the values of the organization. Okay? Always repeat it to them. Being managers also require you to be leaders by example. So if you have uh, if you have a value for compassion, you should exhibit that compassion to your subordinates. No? If you say that uh, if you value time consciousness, you should exhibit values that relating to time consciousness for example not being late right so you as managers should extend no the values of the organization to your subordinates not just by giving them written materials but also giving them life examples okay the next uh, object uh, the next set of policies no or uh, set of statements that you need to develop in organizational planning is to have your goals and objectives goals no goals are the working units no for you to operationalize your vision mission philosophies para po mangyari maisakatuparan ang vision and mission you have to translate it to tangible units to tangible uh, statements, no? measurable statements for you to uh, move forward. Okay? So goals and, ob uh, and objectives no? should be stated in, an, in a realistic manner, realistic and measurable, and yet, but yet, it should be ambitious as well. So, dapat hindi pessimistic ang realism mo sa uh, sa paggawa ng goals and objectives no kasi mababaliwala yung vision and mission mo kung ganoon lang din okay always remember goals are global in nature while objectives are more specific so here's an example no of the goals and objectives of our hospital okay and these are the mechanisms to measure or how to attain such objective. This column represents, no? This column represents the measure, no? To which they can tell themselves, we've achieved our goals and objectives. Okay? Another thing that we need to plan for our organization will be our finances. So this topic talks about fiscal management, which involves budgeting, which is a critical managerial function. Now, throughout history, nursing uh, nurse managers have limited input in budgeting. It's because uh, nursing is, has, has been seen as a non-income generating uh, non-income generating service. Well, this is not true because number one, even though we, they do not see the direct uh, the direct income from the provision of nursing service, our 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 work or the work of nurses are the primary nature of healthcare service inside the hospital. No, so this has to be a uh, so one of the reasons why nursing managers were given limited input in budgeting it's because our service has been seen as yun nga uh, non-income generating okay now uh 
budgeting is actually the most difficult type no or the difficult task in planning because many managers have little education on budgeting no also if uh, in in budgeting it's trying to decide the most crucial element or the most crucial resource for our organization which is not just money but also other expenses or other resources okay now for us to understand budgeting properly we need to understand some concepts related to it we budget because number one we need to do cost containment or to use our daily our services our resources no effectively and efficiently so that we will generate the maximum output from the minimum input no needed it is the responsibility of each healthcare provider to ensure that cost containment is observed no in all aspects of our organization dapat lahat ng miyembro ng organization should understand no cost containment on the other hand when we say cost effective this is not uh this is not synonymous with being inexpensive no this when we say cost effective uh what we have paid for no is what we get kung ano yung ibinayad natin kung ano yung pinaglaanan natin ng resources magiging effective para sa ating organization because sometimes even though a service or a resource is expensive but yet it is effective we can say that our action or our decision is cost effective okay so the concept accounts no or is uh, can be summarized by the phrase the product is worth the price okay now each asset liability revenues and expenses are are always our liability if a person is assigned a certain resource that person na pinag-assignan mo will always be liable for that resource okay so that one is revolves around the concept of responsibility accounting or being liable to what is being assigned to you a common rule no a common rule to follow or to remember in responsibility accounting is that the one who is in direct control or influence of any of financial elements should be held accountable for them at the unit level sa loob ng ward managers are the ones who are accountable but also the staff nurses no kung kayo ay mga estudyante pa the student nurses are also accountable for the resources of the hospital because na primarily it was assigned to you so for example binigyan ka ng uh, binigyan ka ng sphygmo manometer tapos nasira mo you'll be the one who will be responsible for that why because it is assigned to you for use now here are some fiscal terminologies that we need to understand okay so the first one is yung tinatawag na assets no assets are those uh, are those properties no are those uh, accounts that add value to your organization when we talk of liabilities these are accounts no na pwedeng that refers uh, that gives you uh, responsibility no kaya nga liability responsibility over that over that account revenue pertains to kita okay or profit when we talk of jit or just in time this is a this is an important uh, inventory scheme no wherein we try to reduce the number of uh, the number of co uh, the number of stocks that we have so that so that it will only meet the demand of our organization hence reducing the cost no of storing such 
uh, products in our own inventory and also increasing no the return of our investment so just in time is a is a technique no for you to to increase the return of investment and reduce the associated cost of maintaining an inventory okay this is useful in hospitals because uh when we analyze and when we understand the usage of hospital resources we try to reduce no the stocks that we have no in particular med medication because we want to reduce the cost of inventory no kasi kapag nasira yung mga gamot na hindi nagamit na na overstock niyo that will be uh that will uh, that will be not returning to you kasi nasira na hindi mo na nagamit hindi mo na siya maibebenta sa mga pasyente so just in time is a is a concept where you reduce the inventory reduce the cost reduce the risk of uh of stock brokerage no yung pagkasira okay and then increase no increase or hasten your return of investment okay now managed care is a concept where in a third party will shoulder for your uh for will or will subsidize your your healthcare expenditure or healthcare expenses okay ang isang particular now this this act of subsidy or subsidizing your healthcare is usually taken care of by your healthcare maintenance organization no kung saan nagbabayad kayo ng premium no yearly pwedeng yearly pwedeng quarterly pwedeng monthly nagbabayad kayo ng premium and then i-cover yung inyong pag pagkaka-hospital kapag kayo ay nangangailangan ng hospitalization same concept yan sa inyong feel health no your feel health is a state insurer of healthcare so this is a state mandated healthcare insu insurance where all filipinos no can be covered or subsidized by our by their health no so if you have been watching uh, the news no there's a big scandal in feel health no wherein there's a there's a there's anomalous subsidy of patients on dialysis the interim interim reimbursement uh, scheme for covid-19 so so maraming bagay no maraming issues hounding feel health which one of the executives have, to, have told us na will be feel health will be bankrupt by year 2022 no that's sad to hear because most filipino most working class na dededakan ng ng premium no to be paid for their feel health coverage okay now i, uh, sometimes yung health health maintenance organization nyo or feel health will subsidize also the your doctor's fee okay now your doctor's fee can be covered with your feel health or sometimes your health maintenance organization they will be paid according to the service that they have given so that system is what you call your fee for service system where in your health maintenance organization or your health insurer or your health insurance pays for the fee a uh, fee pays for the service of the doctor no na nag-alaga sa inyo nung na hospital kayo okay now here are some uh, the nursing process provides us a good way no to develop our budget no it provides us a good way to budget our resources so ano ano nga ulit yon ng ating uh, uh, nursing process our nursing process starts with assessment in budgeting we assess what needs to be covered Ano ba yung kailangang pondohan? Ano ba yung kailangang budgetan? Okay? Some uh, some organizations budget based on the programs they have. No? Yun yung sinasabi na PBB, yung program based budgeting kung tawagin. 
meron din kasing PBB na tinatawag na performance based bonus no but in terms of budgeting PBB stands for program based budgeting so kung may programa may programa ka doon magsisimula yung assessment mo sa pagba-budget ano sa mga programa ang kailangang budgetan allocatean ng bigyan ng allocation ng resource allocation so you, that's how you assess no for the budgetary needs Now in budgeting or in assessment no of your budget all members of the organization should be involved in this process. Again papasok dito yung leadership theory na democratic leadership no. So pa, so that everyone no will foster a commitment no to utilize their budget properly. The next is to develop your plan, no? planning, to plan for your cycle. Wala po tayong diagnosis ha, sa budgeting kasi hindi, ka naman, hindi naman, wala namang uh, nursing problem no? in budgeting. We just adapt no? the budgetary process no? or the nursing process for the budgetary process in nursing. We develop a plan. Next is we develop a plan or a cycle for budgeting. We should set an optimal time frame for a plan of, to plan a to plan for a budget. So kailangan cyclical so that we know whether we are going going under the red line. So ibig sabihin pag go, you're going to under the red line, bumababa na sa threshold ng budget mo yung meron ka, no yung resource na meron ka. Okay? So you have to set the time to reassess, no? to cycle your budgeting so that hindi ka mauubusan ng budget. Okay? Next is to implement your budget, no? Implementation involves using, no, the budget. Not just using the budget in any means that you want it to be, but rather kailangan po ninyong gawin yung budget niyo, bay or gamitin ang budget niyo or implement ang budget niyo using your uh using a uh, based on what it is planned for okay so you use your budget based on what you need to plan uh, based on what you have planned for it okay next is to evaluate your uh your your budget so pag in evaluate it means you evaluate how you use your budget you need to imp implement uh you need to evaluate how did you use this No? What is the effect? No? Did we achieve what we have planned no? to know whether our budget is good or not? So here are some of type, some uh, different types of budgets. The first type of budget is your personal budget, which is composed no? of, the, of the, or which is the largest component no? of, your, of your budget. Your personal budget is needed, no? is needed to pay for the services that your organization uh, or the members of the organization has rendered. It has to take into account no, the productive time, meaning yung mga time na nasa trabaho na actual yung tao, and also the non-productive time na, na ni-render ng tao sa organization. Also, it has to take into consideration the NCHPPD, or the nursing care hours per patient per day. So based on this nursing care hours per patient per day, kinocompute mo kung uh, how much budget would you need. No? For a certain number of nursing hours inside the organization. So in organization, I will teach you how to determine your NCH per patient per day for a specific type of uh, patient. Okay. The next type of budget is what you call your operating budget, which reflects your expenses, no? In change to the response to the volume of your service. So this refers to the to the operating expenses, no? That you yung mga utilities niyo when performing uh, when operating the organization. So it involves electricity cost, repair, maintenance and supplies. Okay? Now, 
Another type of budget is what you call your capital budget or the budget that is allocated for, merger, for major pur purchases. Okay? Major purchase ng equipment and also major purchase ng building. It also involves major purchase then, no? Or major renovations. Now, the point here is that in capital budget, anything that is used to increase the value of the organization will always fall under the capital budget. So, kunwari, nagpa-repair ka ng, ng wing, ng ward, that's already a capital budget. Kahit na-repair yon dahil renovation, kahit ba na-repair yon dahil siya ay nag-add ng value sa iyong organization, automatic capital budget ang turing doon. Here are some of the budgeting methods. When we say incremental budgeting, this is the simplest mode of budgeting. You just multiply your previous budget with a certain figure, no? a certain economic figure. Usually, ang ginagamit dyan, inflation rate. No? You multiply your previous budget with inflation rate. It's quick but yet inefficient kasi uh, there's no method to contain your cost no kasi your budget might be may, might be budget utilization might be affected by a lot of factors and not just your inflation rate so hindi mo ma-identify kung sino no kung ano yung nag-cost ng ng budget shortage ng budget savings no you're, you're not re-justifying your budget every year when you use incremental budgeting. Another type of zero, uh, another type of budgeting uh, technique is what you call your zero-based budgeting. In zero-based budgeting, you re-justify your programs every budget cycle. So this is labor-intensive. This is the most tedious form of budgeting because you need no, you need to re-justify re-examine how did you use your budget now this is good because it encourages you to use your resources more efficiently okay flexible budgeting is another type of budgeting where you make necessary adjustment to your budgets based on the volume labor cost and capital expenditure so kapag may time na mataas ang usage ng resources ia adjust mo yung 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 budget mo to fit in that surge in resource usage. Another type of budgeting is your new performance budgeting. Now, this new performance budgeting adjusts your budget to the specific performance of a unit to determine your budgetary needs. Now, here the last uh, the last topic will be clinical pathways. Now, clinical pathways are not budgeting techniques, but rather these are templates in uh, in healthcare pro provision. Now, clinical pathways are actually standardized predictions of outcome in assessing, planning, implementing, and evaluating patient care. So, for example, in our hospital, we have clinical pathway for dengue. Now, a clinical pathway is important because we want to streamline the care for these patients. By streamlining our the, to the, the care of our patients, we streamline the use of uh, the use of resources, making our uh, healthcare more practical, no, in covering uh, in caring for our patient. This clinical pathway prevents overusage of health resources, lalong lalo na kung hindi naman kailangan nagamitin sa isang sa isang case. No, ang isang particular diagnostic or therapeutic regimen. So clinical pathways is one way to standardize the care and to make care for the patient more practical. If you have any questions, you may uh, you may send me a direct message through my messenger. And if you need to discuss this uh, to, to discuss your 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 question, you may post in our FB group or through our group chat. So with that, I end my lecture and see you next time.